Renee, thanks again for a kind introduction and for having us come in and present to the audience. It's always nice to be able to come in here and share uh, strategies and, and ideas and concepts with like-minded traders. So glad to be here. First and foremost, uh, today's webinar presentation is going to be based on a specific topic. And it's considered auction curve theory, or I like to call it as um, a probability add-on uh, with regards to system enhancement. And what we're going to do today is I'm going to talk to you about how we can improve or add to each of your strategies and provide market scanners to be able to scan the futures, forex, and equities markets for trading opportunities and locations. Uh, before I go any further, I need to cover a quick disclaimer. So if you can please take a second and look over the risk associated with trading, um, we can get started. So I have an agenda. I want to keep it quick and to the point because I'd like to spend more time on the markets going through the scanners since I am in the middle of trading times for the futures markets. I'm more of a futures focused trader. However, we do have Forex and equities uh, loaded for this demonstration. So if you are a futures Forex or equities trader, we'll be able to accommodate all of you. I'm going to introduce who my team is behind NeuroStreet and all the people that run our trading rooms and where you can get some really important links and some videos and you can take a look at our performance from our trading rooms, uh, broker verification, etc. And then we're going to basically dive in here and talk about auction theory. Now, when I talk about auction theory, there's some important impacts I, I want to go over. I want to talk about curve versus structure going to do a deep dive on the software and then talk about an enhancement framework that I like to call the scanners. So uh, when I say framework, I, I am always talking about a step-by-step -step to process to making a decision. Um, one thing you'll find about the way I like to teach traders and, and explain my experience is I like to break it down so that traders can learn in step-by-step -step manner. Trading is a very difficult business but it is definitely possible. And I know this because I work with traders that make a very uh, good and lucrative income, and I see it all the time, um, and we can validate that through live performance. And uh, we're just, you know, it's, it's really important to make sure that if you're in here and you're new or you're struggling or if you're somebody that has experience, we can help enhance that. Okay, so we do have a promotion that we're running um, mainly for the fact that this is the first time we've opened the scanners for equities and Forex. So those of you that are trading outside of the futures markets, um, I've built an integration to be able to accommodate all market classes. Can you guys give me a, a, a note in the chat box if you're a futures, Forex, or a stock trader? Just maybe type that in the chat box so I can better understand the audience. I think that's always good to know moving forward. If you're a stock trader, put stocks. If you're a futures trader, put futures. If you're a Forex, put Forex. And uh, if you're a day trader, a swing trader, I just want to know who you are because it's going to give us the opportunity to explain how to use this the most effective way. Okay, so it really doesn't matter if you're a day trader or if you're a swing trader. It can be used interchangeably. It just depends on your perspective and time frames. So just to kind of give you a breakdown, the three of us on the top, Michael runs our supply and demand order flow trading programs, Raul runs our market profile and volume profile program, and I'm the, the president of NeuroStreet. I basically work with both programs. I am the senior architect. I work with the development team, and we build all the algorithms for our trading rooms and our software platform integrations. Uh, we wouldn't be here today if Ashley and Ben weren't communicating with Renee and the team over at Investor Inspirations to have us in here. It's always a nice gift to be able to come in and speak with traders. So now that we got the fluff out of the way, let's talk about how to increase probability on trading strategies. And can maybe maybe you guys can tell me a little bit about yourself. If you were to pick the biggest struggle that you are facing as a trader, what is it? Um, is it entry? Is it scanning? Is it risk? Is it market selection? Is it focus? Is it management? Where would you find that 
um, you know, all of the, the, the problem relies or resides on for you as a trader? I guess I, I, the reason I'm asking this is because everybody's a little bit independent. And a couple of people are saying exit, some people saying risk, some people saying entry. Well, what's interesting is that um, we can't really get good at trade management or risk management um, until we're really good at trade selection and entry location. If the entry location's in the wrong place, risk and management really go out the window. If the location is in the wrong in the wrong place based off each market that you're looking at, then then there's no really way to assess becoming a better trader because the first part of getting into the market is deciding when and where to enter. And once you have your entry locations pinpointed properly, you're in the right place at the right location at the right time, then we can look at risk management, position sizing, and trade management, right? It's always a couple steps after. So what the auction curve does is it scans the market for opportunities to be able to tell you when you should be looking to take a trade. It's really about locating permissive action. And that's exactly what we're here today. We're going to basically talk about permissive action to show you when you should be looking to place trades so that you can use your entry tools to identify location. Some of you in here are trading with supply and demand. Some of you are trading divergence. Some of you are trading stochastics or you're trading order flow or you're trading support and resistance. Everybody has a little bit of experience or they're new or they've got a lot of experience. And it doesn't matter the tools that you're using for, en for your entry location. What matters most is when you know you're entering at the right time, on the right market, in the right areas. Okay, does that make sense? Give me a why if that kind of makes sense. I want to, I wanna, this is more of a classroom environment. I like to teach and engage. I want to make sure that everybody's with me. Okay, so it works with every system. And it's driven and built on two fundamental principles. Auction theory, which identifies the wholesale and reta retail price action in the market, basically identifying where you're located in terms of the daily auction. And then market structure. Market structure is the, the price action pattern recognition that is determined based off order flow and volume. Uh, you can't have a price trend, a pullback, or a support and resistance level unless order flow and volume have created it. Right? Order flow comes first, volume identifies participation of the executed order flow, and then as the market unfolds each day, it creates runs and retracements, and that creates the structure. So what we're doing is we're combining daily auction theory with structure to be able to um, to be able to provide you with a framework. And the reason I, I, I think frameworks are I, I, ideal is because you can you can learn step one before moving to step two, right? And then you can learn step two before moving to step three. And once you learn one, two, and three, it's literally about waiting for the market to happen and then fine-tuning your entry location. I'm going to share with you because we're going to scan a whole bunch of markets together today. right? So the first one is filtering trades by the location of the auction. Then we're going to filter trades by the structure of the market. And then we're going to look to execute setups in the market. Steps one and two are what the auction curve are designed to do. Step three is based off of what you're using as a financial trader. I've got some examples. We're going to take a look at some order flow charts and some support and resistance. And if you'd like, we can take a look at uh, supply and demand as well. And I'm going to show you how the auction curve scans baskets of markets to tell you when you're on the right side of the market and structure supports your decision. So let me kind of give you a breakdown of what this looks like. This is a chart of crude oil. Okay. And... The reason I chose crude is because we run futures day trading programs and futures is our primary market for, for the tools intraday and, and crude is a heavily traded market. Um, you're noticing, if you notice, there's two things. I'm going to grab a, a cursor here so I can draw on the charts here so you can see this. And perfect. So step one is over here. Okay, actually that's a bit too big. Okay, so step one is here. And step two is here, okay? It's very, very simple. But what's important to understand is that this is mapping out an area that has a divider line right in the middle. And it's really important to teach traders 
how the market actually works. Most people are taught based off indicators first, when really we should be taught based off price action. Because if you were to buy a car, okay, okay, before understanding all of how the car is made and, and how, how it drives and all that, most people are wondering, well, what's the cost of the car? Okay. Well, if you're looking at a stock, okay, or Forex pair, or futures pair, okay, forgive me, I'm left-handed writing with a right-hand mouse, right? Doesn't matter if you're looking at stocks, Forex, or futures, if you're trading an asset, it's all based off of price action over here on the right-hand side. We always have to identify the fact that we have price is the main denominator across everything in the financial markets. It doesn't matter what you trade, what strategy, everything is involved around price. So if you give me, get, get, get an example here, um, this is the reset of the day. This is the lowest price and this is the highest price. And that is set by Wall Street itself. I mean, that's, that's set by the entire industry of financial traders. Everybody is a collective consciousness, psychology, crowd psychology, everything that comes into trading. It's all about all of us coming together and participating in a daily auction. And normally what's happening is we're going to set the range for the day, which dictates whether we're in expensive price areas or inexpensive price areas each day. Okay. And what's important to know is that this tool does all of that for you by just identifying when you're trading in retail or in value. So you can see right here, right, price is trading up here. Well, technically, if I were to say, well, are we trading in retail or in value, you would say I'm trading in retail. And if you're trading in retail, that means we're at expensive price levels. If price came down here and it was trading down here, you could say we're trading in value. Then we were considered to be cheap. Now, that has nothing to do with where am I getting into the trade or how do I trade it or what's the strategy, but we need to accept first the market is either going to be expensive or cheap. It doesn't matter if you're trading Apple stock, Bayou, if you're trading penny stocks or if you're trading the Euro USD, crude oil, everything can be determined first. Are we trading at expensive price levels? Or are we trading at cheap price levels? And that's really where this discussion is going to go from here because we want to know always if a market is overvalued or undervalued based off of the auction for that day. And that can easily be identified by structure and pattern recognition. Okay, so let's go over here and give you an example of some of the stuff that's under the hood. If you were to take me and I were to go to the auction with you and we we're going to buy a nice car, I'm not going to just look at price. I want to know what's under the hood. Once we know price is understood, then let's talk about the features, right? Well, every single day there's a high and low of day. And so what's important is this tells us the most cheapest price and the most expensive price that the entire world sets for that market on that day. And if we think about this, okay, what's, what's really neat is that there's an 80-20 principle that I think is really, really, really advantageous to understand and accept, right? Because 80% of the time, the market trades in balance in a range. 20% of the time, the market's trying to find balance by going lower or it's trying to find balance by going higher. Most markets are oscillating because the industry can determine expensive and, price, uh, expensive and cheap price levels. When we're trending, it's because the market's trying to dictate value based off usually catalysts that are fundamentally driven. Okay, so What's important to know the, is that our software automatically looks at the auction in control. So take a look at this. This one is current day. This one is prior day. We're not taking just the high and low of days. We're actually going back and, and using the high and low of the daily auction. Plus, we're also looking at pattern recognition through market structure detection, which we're going to talk about next. So it's not just about looking at the high and low of day because anybody can do that. It's about understanding when the high and low of day is controlling the auction. So in this situation, this low of day controlled the daily auction because that was the low of day that held and the market shifted structure. 
right here, do you notice how the market has not yet shifted structure? We're still in an uptrend. We did not break the lows. We never changed direction off the highs. Does everybody kind of see where this is going? This one here changed direction off the lows. It took out structure. This one changed direction off the highs. It took out structure. This one changed direction off the lows. It took out structure. Okay, this one did too. So the reason why it's not taking this one is because this one has not yet chosen to be the top of the auction. This market has not shown us that this is indeed the most expensive this market is going to go for this day at this time. So it's really, really important, valuable information because as a financial trader, we should only ever want to be selling when things are expensive and buying when things are cheap. That's the number one rule. Everybody always says we want to buy low and sell high. That jargon drives me nuts. I can't stand it when someone says that to me. Well, that you just need to buy low and sell high and maybe hopefully you get a couple good trades a day and you're all set. For me, the way I see it is we need to be able to fine tune your strategy to the point where you trust it. If you don't trust it and you can't repeat it over a long period of time, then you just have information. Okay? So what I want to do is I want to show you how, why you want to trust something like this. And we're going to show you how it, you can enhance what you're doing because it is an enhancement add-on. It is designed to increase the efficiency and the probability of your trade setups. In fact, we had asked a few traders that were using this to send in some feedback. And what was interesting is the majority of them reported back that their winning percentage had gone up. I never, I don't care about how much money they're making. It's not my business. But they were all, they were all reporting back saying, listen, I'm not taking as many trades, but I'm taking winning trades. And this is exactly the point of strategy enhancement. It's about cutting out number of trade opportunities, but making sure that you're cutting more losers than winners. And that's how you enhance everything that you do as a, a professional in this business. So this is an example of combining the structure, which we just said. The high and low of day changed the structure. And the reason I put the, the detector on is so you can see the high and low is being broken here. Okay. Now the second component of the auction curve is essentially the, the structure detector. Because sometimes when you're in expensive price levels, the market just keeps going up. And sometimes when you're in cheap price levels, the market just keeps going down. So in an example like this, okay, we're in retail, but take a look. We just broke and we're trying to form an uptrend. So we're at expensive price levels, but yet the market wants to trade to the upside. So this tells us that we're, the, the entire market is, is not really sure what's going on. And, and, and ironically, when we look at its expensive price, like inflation, right? When, when we start looking at, you know, everybody wants to new buy the new, the, new, the new cell phone that comes out. But if you're willing to just wait a couple of weeks, it's all going on sale anyways, right? Same thing here is this market just kept trading higher. The ideal time to be trading this market at these price levels would have been right here. Because this is where we were trading lower with structure at expensive price levels. Whereas in here, we're trading higher at expensive price levels. I'll give you an example on the next slide where we actually show you what that looks like. And so the difference here is we have a detector that tells you whether up or down. So it's color coded because traders are pattern recognized people. We we are trained by definition to identify repeating patterns in the market. And most people learn by signal location. So you, you memorize a pattern or you memorize something the way it looks, a color coordination or a scanner or something, and it enhances the ability for us to focus under pressure. So what we've done with the scanner and what we've done with the auction curve is we've told, we've basically identified when we're expensive and when the market supports being expensive. So a good example here is you can see we're in retail, but the market is putting in lower lows. The only way the market can put in lower lows is if sellers are controlling the market. Stops are being hit. The sellers are abundantly overpowering the buyers. And that may be short-lived, but at that time, this is where we need to identify sellers are favoring expensive price levels. Okay. So 
I want to kind of talk about a few things because the best way for me to describe this is on a chart. Um, being able to demonstrate it on price action and showing you exactly what we're looking at. So a good example is today um, when we were coming into the market this morning on crude oil. This is crude oil on a 10 tick range bar. This might be too small for you guys that are swing traders and options traders, but you could put this on a 15 or a 60 minute chart or you could put this on a, uh, you know, a volume chart or anything like that. It's really about all the context to your style of trading. But let's kind of talk about this. This is the divider line from the reset of the Globex. And you'll notice that we traded higher. Okay. Traded higher. And then we broke the lows right there. So at this time, at this point in time, when we first came in, this was the high of day in the Globex session at the European markets. And then we came in and we kept going lower. At this time, this is considered the most expensive point of the auction. This is, price did not have the ability, there was not enough buy order flow in the market on the entire world to support crude going higher at that time. So when we look at this, same thing here, price came in, price came in, came down, came down, came down, came down, boop, 10.30 this morning, we put in the lows, okay? And then we reverse up. Now that little change, this, this break right here, is what separates the low of day that controlled the auction. There's a big difference between the high of day and the low of day that controlled the auction. Because right here you can see this is the highest high of the day, but it's not technically controlling the auction. Because we are yet to break the most recent structure high with the low. If it does that, this do or die period, or if it does this, and breaks it here or here, then this would be considered the high of day that controls the auction. And the reason this is so powerful to learn is because it tells us a story. Once you learn how to, to, to put oil in your car, you trust that it's going to make the engine run smoother. So what I want to do is I want to show you why we can turn these things on and we can show you how to assess this. So I'm going to turn one thing on at a time. And I'm going to turn the detectors on right here. Structure detection on. Okay. So what's nice about this, it's automated and it's dynamic. Watch what happens here. Do you see how this was uh, right there at that time? It was putting in the highest high, but it's connected technically to this high over here. Because that's the highest high over the past several trading days that changed the structure auction. And you're probably saying, well, why is this important? Why do we care about where we are in the auction and whether or not structure's on our side? Well, because trading is like a game of football in terms of who's in control of the, of the game. And I'm going to explain this as a fellow athlete. Um, let's just say you've got a football field like this, okay? And you've got team one and you've got team two. Team one are sellers, and team two are buyers, okay? And the reason I like to dumb it down like this is because it's as simple as this. When we simplify trading, we simplify decision-making. And once you've simplified decision-making, trading doesn't become so stressful anymore. Um, and then we have the center line, like this. And the goal is to try to get to one end or the other, right? If you're a buyer, you want to go higher. If you're a seller, you want to go lower. So let's assume that we're, we're buyers and we're all going this way, okay? Well, if you're up here, and this is expensive, I'll just put expensive over here, and if we're cheap, we're down here. Cheap, you want to be buying when you're cheap and selling when you're expensive. But if the buyers are all getting up here, and let's say you weren't a buyer, you were a seller, and you want to start looking to sell the market. Well, yes, you want to be selling the market at expensive price levels, so that's check mark number one. But do we want to be sitting here and just having blind orders like this? Potentially, depending on the strategy, might work. Or do you want to wait for price to tell us that we're actually favoring the shorts? Okay, and this is where a lot of people want confirmation. Now, sometimes people will put buy orders and sell orders, and price comes in, they fade, and they do quite well, and they come down and fade. That's a different strategy. 
However, a lot of people need to learn confirmation first before they start trusting things. And this is where the auction curve can enhance a lot of the things that you're probably doing already with every strategy you've ever looked at, is waiting for the right time to know if you're expensive and structure is going down or if you're cheap and structure is going up. Because sometimes you'll have downtrends in here and you'll have uptrends up here, which means it's a mixed market. And you don't want to be trading in mixed markets because it doesn't support decision making. So if we're sitting here right now, okay, if we're sitting here right now, just looking at crude oil, the reason we're in value is because we've taken out the structure high of the day. If I go back, if I go back, okay, and I'm sitting here like this. Do you see how it just shifted like that? And what's interesting is that a lot of people, okay, have either support and resistance levels on their chart, pivot lines, order flow setups, you know, fib levels. We have the ability now to wait for this transition right here and then start planning to buy the market. Instead of holding it here and then potentially having a huge drawdown, knowing that that's the low that's going to hold, we never know that. Or we could wait for the market to get us into an order flow setup here, a demand setup here, a FIB level here, a pivot point, whatever the case may be, whatever indicator you're using, it's going to tell you you're now in value and structure supports your decision. Does everybody understand that for a second? Give me a why if that makes sense to you. I'm going to go back over here. We're up here. We're in retail price levels. Okay. Do you see now we took out structure. We changed a bit. We're in retail price locations. Does this mean we need to sell right here? No. It just means that maybe you have a, a, a resistance level here from whatever software we're using. Maybe we get an order flow signal if price trades up in here. Maybe we get a, a, a supply level, right? Whatever the case may be, if you're using entry software to identify trade location of entry, now you know you're in a permissive area where the market supports selling and you're expensive in the daily auction. And so if you take a look, price came up. See here, if I turn order flow on, I can almost bet you that there's an order flow signal in here, right here in this trap. I can almost assure you this. Or if you're trading resistance levels, okay, price is coming in to retag resistance after changing structure. But at least you're identifying you're on the right side of the market for trading that. Okay. So I'm going to show you why this is so valuable because technically, um, you know, I'll give you an example. Uh, there was a huge trade on the euro today, a huge trade off the FIB levels that we have. And uh, it was a massive trade, and it was identified clearly by the auction, uh, the structure detector, and the daily value. And the best way to show you is, is to go to the euro. I'm going to go down here. I've got uh, three scanners here. Um, mainly, uh, what I'd like to do first is I'd like to talk about what the scanners are telling us. Okay, so I'm just going to pull this over so you can see this. Uh, the reason I call it an opportunity framework is because every morning when you get up and your goal is to make money, what we're doing is we're looking for opportunity to participate. All right? Can everybody agree with that? Give me a why if now you were on the same page. Let's walk into the office in the morning. We got our coffee and it's time to look for making money. That's the goal. Okay, so... The way that I've designed this is we can scan futures, we can scan Forex, we can scan ETFs or stocks based off of what I've just explained. Step one is identifying if you're expensive or cheap. Okay, We want to know, are we trading at expensive price levels or are we trading at cheap price levels? It's really valuable information to know right out the gates whether you're expensive or cheap based off the market. And then we ask ourselves, is the market supporting our area? So we ask ourselves, first of all, is the market um, basically in a bullish structure or in a bearish structure where we're cheap or where we're expensive? And that brings us to step three is it's a decision. We have to make a decision. Can I execute? 
Can I look to take an entry based off where the market is trading at that time? This is where we bring in our indicators. This is where we bring in the strategies that you've purchased or the trading rooms that you're trading in right now. It doesn't matter because we have a lot of customers from, from multiple different experience levels coming in and they use this as an add-on to enhance decision making for everything that they've ever done because it simplifies cutting out a lot of the noise, keeps them out of the noise, keeps them out of the chop, keeps them out of the areas in which they probably would have been taking losses before. And so you end up with two decisions. You're either allowed to take a buy trade based off of whatever strategy that you're using, or you're allowed to take a sell trade. And that creates an opportunity. So we call it a buy op or a sell op. Okay, so let's go in here and take a look at the scanners because the scanners do this all for you automatically. Right now, if I'm in live markets, I'm going to take a look. I can just permission. I can click on permission. You can see I have curve, structure, and permission. Okay, so there's three columns. There's curve, structure, and commission. Curve, uh, commission, permission. Curve is basically the retail and value. This is telling us, are we cheap or are we expensive? So if we were to go down, we could easily see right now which markets are expensive and which markets are cheap. If we're looking at Forex, I'm going to connect to Forex, actually. So we can get the scanners running on these markets and the ETFs. Give it a sec here. It's going to scan. Give it time. It's just loading our order flow charts as well because I have three tabs down here at the bottom. So it just takes a second to catch up. And once this happens, we're going to be able to click on permission to be able to identify um, basically uh, which markets we want to focus on because you might be looking at a whole bunch of different instruments okay you might be looking at a whole bunch of different instruments and you you only need to focus on three at this time which is really nice to know that it simplifies market decision making process right so I'll give you an example I'm just gonna click on this click on this and click on this uh, there we go that's futures that's ETFs give it a sec here there we go. Okay, so there's the auction curve. So if I were to go to crude oil right now, okay, if I click on crude oil and I go over here to crude oil, right now I'm in a selling opportunity for crude. And ironically, we just came into a, a selling area. Now I'm going to turn um, the, I'm going to turn supply and demand off for a second. And I'm just going to focus here at this time. Okay. Do you notice how we just closed below right here? We just took out the lows. This scanner just identified that break in structure. Okay. And it's also identified now that we have a selling opportunity in crude oil to assess. Does that mean that we're going to start selling it? No. It means that we need to start looking to plan how are we getting into this market? Where are we taking the trade? How are we taking the trade? I know I'm allowed to. Okay, we know we're allowed to, we just have to be able to plan where and when. So right now we can see that we're trading at expensive price levels. Okay, and at that time we can go in and assess. The way I see this is I could turn on a supply zone if I wanted to trade supply levels. There's a nice big level of supply around 75. If price comes back up to supply, this would be the ideal time to be shorting it because now we're trading in retail and structures on our side. If we were to not trade supplier demand, we could turn supplier demand off. And let's say we wanted to trade, this is, these are Fibonacci levels. These are Fibonacci confluence levels. So let's say I wanted to plan a short around this resistance level for a scalp. Well, this right here is where we have the other levels on, okay? And you'll see here, these are, um, these are trading levels that we can plan out for shorting uh, or buying, depending on our strategy. And at this time, we're only looking to plan the short. So this would be the sell area in which I would look to engage my entry. But rather than just buying or selling randomly off indicators or whatever strategies you're using, the scanner tells us when and where we are allowed to participate. Can you guys give me a why if that makes sense to you? Just I want to make sure that everybody understands what I've told first. 
before we start going into looking at other markets and looking at other opportunities. Can you guys give me a why if, if everybody's kind of on that understanding or if, if, I, if I need to repeat something? Perfect. Excellent. So what you're seeing up here on the top screen is a bunch of other tools that we use in our trading rooms to enter trades. And what's interesting is the auction curve tells us when to look to trade. And then you could be using other tools, whether you're using other indicators or you're using any of ours. Ironically, these are entry tools for a, permiss a permission tool. And you may not be using uh, the NinjaTrader platform at this time. These software add-ons are designed for Ninja. Uh, the, the nice part about it is if you're executing on other tools or other systems, you could be running a chart with the auction curve on it and just be using a data feed to provide that, or you could be looking to, uh, to use a demo feed to test it. Right, just to see exactly how you're you're enjoying the use of it with your strategies. But the nice part about it is that it it's it's the auction curve is not an execution platform. It's designed to scan the market. So let's go in here, give an example. If you take a look at Forex, do you see how Forex has no opportunities right now? It just means that structure and value are not aligned across the entire basket of markets that we have scanned, which means the markets aren't moving right now. Okay, if I were to go to the ETFs down here, let's take a look at the ETFs. If I'm, I'm going to go over here to this market here, and I'm going to look at the, the diamonds. The diamonds is the, the Dow Jones index. This is, this is a smaller time frame, so if you're scalping the market or if you're day trading the market, this is a seven tick range bar. Take a look at where we're trading at right now. We're in retail price levels, and structure is down. This would be ideal for us to want to trade short this market. So what I'd like to see happen is I'd like to see it come up to an entry tool or an entry location like a supplier demand zone, an order flow signal, a FIB level, et cetera, divergence. And what we're doing here is we're identifying that, yes, this is indeed an area in which we can look to plan to short this market because I'm on the right side of the auction and I'm also in the right uh, structure to support selling. Do you notice how we came up? We came down. And you'll notice this isn't the highest high of the day. This is not the auction that's controlling the, the market. The highest high of the day is this more around noon, uh, where it was controlling the auction here around noon on the market. And uh, the indices have been a bit fast the last couple of days. Uh, the range is definitely picking up. Uh, if we look at, let's say, the spiders. Okay, I'm going to just go over here. We're going to assess the spiders. Let's see what the spiders is showing us. And this is an example of being able to show you that it doesn't really matter um, what market you're trading or the time frame. Uh, the scanners can be customized for that. We'll give it a sec to load because, ironically, it takes a bit of time for the order flow data to populate. Um, we're using uh, print charts, and there's a lot of stuff going on in, inside the back end because I have everything on one chart. Um, but it's, uh, it's nice to know once it kicks in and you see it, just depending on on the market that you're looking at or depending on the strategy that you're looking to enter on uh, the auction curve and see see take a look at where we're at right now see the the spiders okay the spiders and let's just go in here for a second let's see here we're gonna reset that reload ninja script we're gonna scan that And depending on if you're looking at the spiders or if you're looking at the QQQs or if you're looking at any of these markets, uh, there it is. You see the spiders now just switched to a buying opportunity because we switched in value and we just came down into demand. Now, depending on your time frame, right, what just took place is we are in value, okay, over here. And we just broke structure. So if I were to go in here and take a look at what just happened, we came into a demand zone to buy the market down here. Price came in like this and pushed out. And then it came back into a buying opportunity. Okay. 
Take a look at this. This is an order flow signal that just happened on our entry software. Some traders would go long here, but this is starting to get expensive. I would not be trading at this level because this red divider line is on the auction curve that tells us we're in expensive price levels. So I would not look to trade this. I would not look to go long in this area. The trade is over. The scalp is over. Right? This is a small time frame for the spiders with this range right now. Obviously, it's, uh, it's a fast market. However, if you take a look at where we're trading, okay, I'm going to just do like this. We're sitting right in the middle of where the market's been trading all day. And that's why the scanners are there to help you understand where you are on the right side of the market. Let's take a look at the queues. The queues are a bit faster. We're going to move the queues. It's looking at a buying opportunity on queues. And you can sort by permission. So if you want to look at bonds, you want to look at gold, you want to look at silver. Let's take a look at gold. Let's take a look at gold here for a second. And this is really just there to define uh, trade selection. Uh, I'll give you an example of what took place on gold and then and uh, take a look at here. This is a great example of a primary trade to go long the market. Uh, if you were to come in and see that we are in value, okay, so as I mentioned earlier, you want to be buying when you're cheap. And at this time, look at the market is going up and your structure is on your side. So you are now in an environment where the market is viewed as cheap but the market's also working with you to be trading to the long side. And so this is where we get a chance to assess, am I going along the FIB level? Am I going along the demand zone? Am I going along an order flow trade, right? Depending on how you're trading, I'm not sure exactly what entry tools you're using or if you're using ours or if you're using other indicators like overbought or oversold oscillators or moving averages. You might have a moving average coming in here like this and you want to by the moving average. Whatever your preferred method of entry is, the curve and the structure tells you that you should be looking to buy the market at this time. And then what took place here, I'm just going to turn supply and demand on for a second. Okay. Okay, do you see this? There's a demand zone here at this time. And watch what happens. Price comes down into the FIB, into the demand, and reverses right here. Okay, this would be an ideal place to start looking to take the trade because the order flow shifted. Okay, right in here on that level. And then it rallied out. Now that's, maybe you're not a demand or supply trader. Maybe you're not a FIB trader. Maybe you're a moving average trader. Maybe you're a stochastics trader. Whatever you, you do for your entry, this tells us that we are in the right location for buying the market. So on the next pullback or the next opportunity into an area, we should be looking to engage. Okay. So let's go and take a look at the euro. The euro was an example today. Uh, there was a great trade on the euro. Um, let's go take a look at the euro for a second. Off the lows, right off the lows, there was an... These are FIB levels, by the way. So if you're interested in wondering what these are, these are entry tools that we sell through our systems and our trading programs and stuff. But this, this discussion is on the auction curve today. And uh, I want to make sure that we keep it on the auction curve and show you why I'd be looking to buy in these areas versus selling in these areas, right? So if we take a look at this, okay? Market's trading lower. Okay, we don't have a grid on this. Do you see this? Remember I said sometimes you're going to be trying to find balance or sometimes you're going to be trying to find, uh, you know, value. Uh, right now the market's trending lower, lower, lower until the market broke right here. Okay, what we did was we put in a change in structure off the lows of the morning. And this was ideal because this was a place in which the market was basically telling us the entire world was telling us that that's the low of day and we just broke the structure. So therefore, buyers are now starting to control this market. And what's interesting is that this is where a lot of traders need to start changing decision around, okay, how am I getting into this market? How do I start to play this market to the long side? How do I start to understand when should I be buying? Because when it was happening this morning, the scanners said buying opportunity, okay, 
and there's an entry location, right, for a fib, or if we're looking at demand or supply, okay, there was a demand zone there as well. And this is a great example of the market coming down right there into the area, okay, and then just going. And this is where you want to be looking to buy the market. It's ideal because you're on the right place of the auction and the market structure was telling us that this is when the buyers are now starting to control this market. And these are things that you will not have at your disposal using free charts and just running scanners on normal websites that do not have this type of information at your exposure. If you're somebody that's relying on a moving average and you're not being able to tell you where you're at in the auction or if you're not using other forms of tools for market internal data, you're at a disadvantage, unfortunately, than, than all of the traders that have professional tools at their exposure. And with the advancements of software and the advancements of technology, we have these tools to be able to help pinpoint areas of location. Now, if you're somebody like me and likes to keep a clean chart, okay, I can turn off all of the stuff that's not important if I'm not looking at order flow and I'm not looking at all this other stuff, right? And if I just want to turn all of these uh, other factors, let's say I just want to look at support and resistance, right? I just want to look at support and resistance levels with the auction, right? This is a great example of how you could do that. Right, And let's say you don't want momentum down here. You don't want any of that. You just want support and resistance on your chart. And you want to look at being able to identify, am I at the right place at the right time? And, and that's really what we're doing with the auction curve is we're determining, are we at the right place at the right time? Okay. You see here, I would not want to be selling these resistance areas because this is exactly how traders get stuck fading the market. Right. If you take a look at this, it's a viable resistance level. So why would we want to buy support and sell resistance and trust the levels? Well, first of all, the auction curve kept us out of that short. It also kept us out of that short, too. But here's the difference. Your traders say, well, that one worked and this one didn't. I would rather miss the winning trade and miss the losing trade. Okay, then to take both and to break even. I would rather sit and wait patiently for the right opportunity. So let's take a look at this. Structure is still up. We should not look to sell. This is exactly the same rules that kept us out of that short. So if you took this one, you would have taken both of these stop outs too, not using the auction curve. And that's exactly why we have the auction curve designed for us to not even be trading in any of this noise and take a look. We'd be taking all those shorts against structure, which would keep you on the wrong side of the market and you'd be getting stopped out. So the way this works is, is we only want to be selling this market when it shows us the sellers are in control. And this, the, the euro has not had sellers controlling this market today. Let's take a look at the market on crude oil, I want to see exactly uh, whether or not crude oil has come back up for that opportunity. Has not yet come back up for that, that short. So it's sitting there, which is ironic because crude is still at a time when it wouldn't be trading. Uh, let's take a look at the NASDAQ. So let's take a look at the, the NQ. Let's see what the NQ is doing. Okay. And uh, this takes a little bit more time to load because the NASDAQ's a very fast market and it's on a 10 tick range bar, which is very, very small for this market. So it's loading every single tick data that's coming in for our order flow software. Um, normally we encourage traders that if you're just using uh, futures, then you just load your futures. You don't have the other scanners because all the other scanners do take processing speed as well. And we want to make sure that everything works super fast and super efficient and et cetera. All right, so we'll give it a second. The NQ usually takes it. Is there any questions at this time for any of the stuff that I've looked at? Um, I just want to ensure that I don't uh, skip by anybody's curiosity or, um, you know, anything like that. Everybody seems pretty content with it. 
Heinz says, top presentation, simple and clear. Um, well, it's, it's about making sure that we can help you. Uh, there's a lot of information out there, and maybe some of you resonate with what we're showing you here, and I'm sure there was a lot of great presentations earlier uh, with a lot of great uh, golden nuggets, if you will. And I'm wondering if the NASDAQ's going to lock me up here or not. We'll give it time. Another opportunity, can we, can we look at bonds? Saul wants to look at bonds. Yeah, I just want to make sure that the NASDAQ loads first, uh, just so that I don't uh, create a lockup on any, any type of data processing. And uh, the NASDAQ's a very fast market, and uh, I'll give it a second to load here. Might be too small of a fractal to look at the NASDAQ. So we'll give it some time here. Now, for those of you that have been here since the beginning of the presentation, um, can you tell me if there's any market that, are, or basically, are you a day trader or are you a swing trader? Maybe that's the first question that I would like to answer. Are you guys day traders or are you swing traders in here? Both. Both. Perfect. So we'll give it a sec here. Day trading, Dan. Swing, Saul says. Okay. So I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to close this out because it's obviously uh, it's obviously locking up. So give me one second here as I uh, I just test the feed. I'm just going to close off NinjaTrader and uh, we'll load it back up. Give me one second here. Just it's really fast for me to do that. And it really depends to uh, how many markets you're looking at and you're scanning. It really uh, looks at whether or not you're, uh, you're scanning futures, Forex, or stocks. Yeah, let's connect to data. I'll just load it here. Simple and easy. Just sometimes needs to reset the data. We'll give uh, this market time to load. And then we'll take a look at uh, bonds. We could look at the ZB if you're looking at bonds. Um, we could look at... Uh, the thing with the NASDAQ is it's super, super fast. In fact, the volatility on the index markets have been quite, uh, quite drastic. Um, and so sometimes it's best to sit aside on some of those really wild markets until they start to get really, uh, really paced out, depending on how you're trading. Um, you know, if, if you're seeing down here, if you were just looking at futures, right, then what we could do is we could, you know, close out some of these other scanners. But let's take a look here at uh, the Russell, right? The Russell's here. Let's see what the Russell's doing. Let's see if the Russell's a little easier for us to assess the order flow on it. And let's take a look at what the Russell's doing. Okay, so the Russell right now is in a buying opportunity. We're in value, okay, we're in value, and we're sitting coming down into a Fibonacci level. So this would be an ideal place for traders to start looking to position themselves for a long trade during live markets. And normally what a lot of our traders do is they'll sit and they'll wait for confirmation. So this is a buy area. So what I like to do is I like to basically um, turn these areas on and know that I'm within my area. So if order flow confirms my decision, I've used the scanners to find this trade. Right, so instead of going through all these markets and frustrating ourselves on market selection, I just need to look where the opportunities are. There's a selling opportunity on the NASDAQ. There's a selling opportunity on the Russell. 
There's a selling opportunity on the YM and on crude oil. I don't have my data connections to Forex and, and stocks for this purpose, but Jammin says, what a love to see the NQ. <laughs> well, I can give her one last shot, and uh, let's take the selling opportunity. Let's just see, see if it's going to load here. I'll give it one last shot here, and let's see if it's going to give it to us. It might just be the data is coming in so fast from the NQ. There it is. So it's loading. It's just calculating each of the, uh, the different indicators. Because we're loading so much tick data to be able to populate the order flow. Normally, if you're going to be trading order flow, you just have your order flow charts on. If you want to trade levels, you can trade levels. And uh, you can see the reversal in price, though. You can see how the price came in off the highs. It's reversing its breaking structure. And so what's important here is to know that you can look to short this market at the right location. Okay. So, you know, and the market might be picking up a little bit fast too. Um, you know, getting close to the close. It's, uh, Jammin wanted me to look at the NQ. There it is. So do you see where we're at right now? It's just populating all the data. And there's a lot of order flow data to assess. And the reason I kept it all on here is so that you can see that it doesn't matter which entry tool we're using. Um, all that matters is we're, we're looking to make sure we're trading in the right location. Right? So we'll give the fibs a second to load. It's loading one more, uh, one more calculation. And then we'll be able to assess it. So... And maybe you guys can type in the box, what are you using for your primary entry tool? What is your primary tool for entry? Are you using FIBS? Are you using supplier demand? Are you using stochastics? Are you using RSI? Are you using MACD? Are you using custom indicators? What is it that you guys are currently entering on the market? I like to ask these questions because it really depends on the right location. And then you have the opportunity to be able to uh, go in and uh, Heinz says supply and demand. Perfect. Just there's too much data to process the NASDAQ. It's just uh, I have too many days on my look back for the for this market. Anybody else here have any comments on how they choose to enter their trades? Vernon says he uses price action. Okay. Well, it really just depends on your style. Uh, RSI and GAN, Sergio says. Okay, so he's using RSI and GAN location, right? So you could be looking to see if RSI identifies up here with an overbought position, right? Being in seller's territory, you want to be using RSI for either overbought or oversold or maybe momentum, um, right? And uh, let's give it time to uh, load. I think it's going to crash again. So apologies for that, guys. As technology, we never plan on it happening. And uh, just uh, just too much data on the NASDAQ to process all that. And uh, I'll increase the fractal if we're going to use the NASDAQ. Because I'm on a 10 tick bar, which is the equivalent to like a one minute chart. It's super, uh, super fast. Right? And sometimes it's too fast. It's too fast to be able to process that much data, depending on uh, if you're recording on your screen or if you're doing a webinar, right? I'm running a lot of software on my charts as well. But uh, nonetheless, we'll give it a second to catch up and we'll see if there's another opportunity. Crude oil still got the selling opportunity. We never, I mean, we wouldn't be trading crude at this time. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what happened on the... Uh, Right, and I'm gonna I'm gonna just take out uh, the forex markets because the forex is the same thing. You just I would connect the data, I would scan, I would look for the opportunities, I would look to see if there was a short. I'll give you an example here. This was a prime short, right here. There was a huge shorting opportunity up here. Came up into the supply zone. Look, we were at the highs, but we were in negative structure, right? This is the 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 U.S. dollar, Japanese yen, right? So I could close these out, right? I'm just gonna 
delete this off, delete that off, and keep the futures. I'm going to close this out for a second, and we'll just, you could load whatever markets you choose to in here, right? You could have a scanner on the left, chart on the right, and what's nice about this is that the scanner, you just click on a button. I've got two selling opportunities to assess and one buying opportunity to assess. So we obviously know I'm not going to load the NASDAQ, right? And if I was to look to sell crude oil, I would wait for price to come up to the supply zone or the resistance level. If I'm looking at the Russell, let's take a look at the Russell and see if it's given us a shift in order flow yet. And then, yeah, we could add the ZB on here, Salt. So just give me one second and we'll add. What's the contra? See how the order flow has not changed yet? Do you notice how we're coming into this market and we're still coming in with negative delta? So if you're familiar with order flow, that might be over over some of your guys' experience level or maybe not. Um, but if, if you're coming into these, these levels and you start to see that there's still a whole bunch of selling coming in here, um, you know, this would be where I would wait for some confirmation. If this bar can reverse, okay, if this bar could reverse and, uh, you know, come in here. And yeah, I don't have an I don't have a, a Russell one made, so I won't take it. But this is a sim account, anyways. But for the most part, if this was to basically change into a positive uh, trade environment, meaning positive delta, right? If we start to see positive numbers coming over those bars, then what we could be doing is be looking to position ourselves to get long this market, right? We're talking about support and resistance. We're also talking about being in value on the curve with structure on our side, and the scanners told us that. So this is exactly why we would look to partake here if order flow supports confirmation, right? So taking a look here, uh, let's add a market. So let's just add it. Let's just see. Now it's got a no opportunity, um, but mind you, this is a 10 tick bar, Saul. So if we were to look at the ZB market, it 10 ticks is a bit much for this market. Uh, possibly going down to a bit, right? You can see that there's not a lot of data in here. But if you take a look at this bar type on this time frame, we're sitting here at expensive price levels, but we've not yet reversed out. Right, if I go in here to a smaller time frame and I adjust this down to maybe say a four tick bar or a three tick bar, that'd be different. Makes sense? Because right now we're in an uptrend on a smaller time frame, but I still would not look to sell this market until we had structure changing. Does everybody understand how that could be advantageous? Right? We got a whole bunch of markets, and at the end of the day, it's three three twenty. Obviously, a lot of these markets are done moving for the day, okay? But it gives us really good insight to be able to identify, uh, you know, where to scan, why we're scanning. First things first is we always want to make sure that we know we're expensive or cheap, and whether or not structure supports our direction. Once we have both working on our side, it's a matter of time until we just pick the entry tool. The entry tool can be anything. It can be anything that you believe and trust in. And if you don't have a tool that you trust in, this is exactly why we exist as an organization with trading rooms to help you. Okay, so here's, here's something else to consider. Take a look here. Do you see how that FIB level did not hold? And I was explaining that the only way that I would look to engage here is if the order flow supported that decision. And it didn't. So even though there was an opportunity to take a trade, having the right information at your side, it did not get us into a wrong trade. Okay? Really, 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 really key. Really key. Okay? So let me kind of just go back here and, uh, and kind of circle things. I want to I share with you guys a couple things that I think are really, really important. Um... On our website, I'm just going to put this link in the chat box. Uh, I encourage everybody to join us for a free trade room pass. We have two trading rooms running, 
and we have a market profile trading room, we have a supply and demand trading room. And the supply and demand room runs the auction curve, market profiles on bigger time frames. Uh, let me see here, that's two panelists and all attendees. So there we go. So that's the website, neurostreet.com. And under software, you're going to find auction curve. And then a lot of the other tools that you've seen here that uh, are, were on my charts. And for most part, a lot of you that may or may not know who we are or what we do, uh, you can join us in our live trading rooms on a guest pass if you're interested in watching our traders trade. But I think that if you're, you're searching around for a place to, to trust, um, you know, we've got experienced educators that put our performance on the website. And so I'll give you an example. This is Rob Rivera. He runs our market profile room. And this is why I would encourage you to be around a group of traders that really know how to teach traders. Um, you might look at these numbers. You say, are you serious? This guy made that much money this year? And the answer is yes. All of his broker statements are down here at the bottom. Okay. He's already done 400% return on his account. He trades very large size because he's a very large trader and he's an experienced educator. Traders can start trading a $10,000 account or small accounts, and you're still getting a percentage. ROI is ROI, okay? It doesn't matter how much money you make as long as you're becoming a good trader first. It's not about the big dollars. It's about the skill set. Give you an example here. This is another trader that runs our order flow and supply and demand room, Michael Black. He's having a stellar year. Um, you know, he, he trades an educational account um, and basically tracks performance. And what we've done is we've basically compared the room account versus the compound account. So if you were basically trading a 25K account like he was, uh, you know, this is what he's done this year each month in the room, trading smaller accounts, trading smaller size. This is a scalping room. And uh, ROI is still ROI. Now, why am I showing you this? Because... There's a lot of uh, information out there that can, uh, that can steer traders in one direction or the other. And I'm an advocate that it's important that you come into our rooms first and trust that your experience is something you enjoy, right? If you come into our trading rooms and it's not some fit for you using our tools, well, then the last thing we'd want to do is to have you be in a trading room that you're not comfortable with. Um, you know, the auction curve is a great tool. Uh, this is the, the page for what we're using the auction curve for. And there's a link for it here. But I want to basically also mention that there's video training on it. Um, if you're interested in joining our YouTube channel, I would encourage that because our YouTube channel is very dynamic. We put videos on there uh, every single week. Uh, recaps, trading rooms, etc. But uh, I want to kind of go over the, the cost of this software should you decide that this is right for you. Okay, so the auction curve software is normally $14.95. You get two licenses. Uh, you get usage and training videos. You get access to our trading rooms. And if you'd like to speak to an account representative, you can email sales at Neurostreet or you can call us at 1708 Trade NS, stands for Trade Neurostreet. And what's nice about this is that because this is an open uh, a webinar offer that we've done for the new release of the scanners for Forex and ETFs, then essentially you can basically, uh, we'll give you $500 off. And normally we only did that on the launch of the software to our internal customers, but we've opened it for anybody that's interested in it because that a lot of you may or may not be trading futures, uh, depending on your, your market of choice. And we want to give you the biggest break we can. Plus you get a chance to come in and speak with all of our trade rooms and, and do all that fun stuff because we run them very actively. Okay. Um, I'm going to give you guys a link. And I want to thank you guys for your time. Obviously, uh, lots of information to understand, and I'm sure there was some really, really great presentations today. Uh, hopefully, you guys uh, enjoyed learning. I'm going to put uh, an order form link in the, uh, the chat box. Okay, I'm going to put an order form link in the chat box for you so that you guys can use this link should you choose to engage in the auction curve. And for, for most of you, you'll have questions. I would assume that uh, on, on some of the information that I've talked to you guys about today, uh, I would encourage questions. We have account managers who are also traders in our programs that speak to our traders, and they'd be more than happy to get on a phone with you and go over the markets that you're looking at and talking about the time frames that you're trading on and, and making sure that it's the right fit for you. Right. So uh, 
hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Um, I truly did. And Renee, it's always great to have you guys uh, invite us in to share our, our knowledge. And hopefully, uh, hopefully we can do it again sometime. So thanks a, thanks a lot, traders. Appreciate your guys' attendance. And I'll see you guys in the live markets.